20 years ago, my dad and I built the Challenger aircraft. It was a great summer build. We had lots of fun. And this year, I'm going to build the Dakota Hawk by Flying Fisher. The Dakota Hawk is a two-place, side-by-side, um, high-wing, um, small aircraft built completely out of wood. Uh, I had a number of tools from building a house, and I thought wood would be a neat medium to build with, um, and that's why I wanted to build it. Let's get going, and I'll start showing you how we got started. Four sheets of plywood. The top two I have complete sheets and you can see the line where they met right there. I took the bottom layer and put a full sheet in the middle and then cut one sheet and put it half the sheet on this side and then half the sheet on the other side. Uh, two by four construction for the frame. I would have liked to use fancy joints and stuff, but I lag bolted and screwed the heck out of it so that it's going to be solid. And let me tell you, that is one solid bench and heavy. I've got two by sixes that I had sitting around, uh, 16 footers, so they actually worked perfect all the way down. I was on the web trying to find how to build a big table. Uh, I couldn't find anything. I could find building small tables. Uh, lots of guys complained that they didn't have room for a 16-foot table. I've got plenty of space. And this isn't going to be the last build, so I wanted to build something good and sturdy. I'm going to put shelving underneath um, in the future. I've got the piece of plywood just sitting over there. Got to put, cut it, put it in. Um, but for now, the table itself is complete. Step one has been done. The table is complete. On the uh, seam here, it wasn't quite level. I did have to sand a little bit to make it absolutely perfect level. And I don't know if you can see in the camera the different color in the paint there. That's because I sanded down a bit through the veneer layer on the plywood. But it is now absolutely perfectly level from one end to the other. That's going to be perfect for building wings and fuselage and such. I can hardly wait to get started. Tomorrow. So what I did was photocopied four sheets of the wing uh, rib pattern. I'm going to take these four sheets and put them onto MDF piece of wood and make my four ribs, copies of ribs right from the photocopied master. Uh, I've checked them. They're all exactly the same size. They're exact same size as the master. So I feel pretty confident that I can use these copies, put them on a piece of MDF, and go ahead and make my rib jigs using these copies. What I've gone on highlighted and tried to figure out where I'm going to put my blocking I'm going to put the blocking around the outside, square blocks. On the inside, I'm going to try and use, I've seen some guys using uh, a round piece of wood with an offset uh, axle to tighten up uh, the spar against, or the top cap against um, the blocking. So you get a nice tight fit all the way around. I'm going to try and do that. Uh, a few things I don't understand with this set of drawings just yet is this first little bit here. DW1 are all the um, little uh, lashes.
lattices, I guess, or whatever you call them. So that's one of them, and I'm assuming it takes that full shape all the way down there. Um, DHW12 is the leading edge. DHW13 is the front shape. I'm not sure about the DW10 and the DW11 how it goes. It looks like it's a long strip that goes all the way down the front of the ribs. I'm going to find out about that. I'll do some studying tonight and see if that is correct. It really doesn't show here. You've got the AA here, that view. That view, sorry, detail AA. So here's that DHW11 and DHW10. There's the cap or the, uh, the leading edge that comes around like this. DHW13 sits beside there, um, and that's the former for the leading edge. Then you have um, the rib itself. And I don't know what the little line in the middle there is. Again, we're having a problem focusing, but that would be the bottom cap and the top cap with the rib separator there. I just don't know exactly what that little line in the middle there is. And these two, I'm not sure how exactly they match up with that, if they go right over top of that. Um, so I'm gonna have to find that out. Alrighty. It is a little bit of work, but I took what was left of that spruce, I cut it there to length that'll be long enough for all of my wing rib caps, and I turn a six inch into a bunch of little three eighths inch caps, and that will do five to six ribs. And the result is a lot of sawdust and a lot of sawdust, wood chips coming out of the planer. That thing is loud and man, it takes down that wood in no time. There's the latest. I've created a template I showed you the other day, or the other maybe 10 seconds with you watching. So there's a template. I screwed on blocks. I might need more, or I might just put little finishing nails in to hold it the caps exactly where they're going to go. Um, all I did for these, I just took an actual plastic cutting board and chopped it up. I put the plastic covering on here, the coating, you can see it. And these are plastic, so I'm hoping no glue is going to stick to the plastic. But anyways, that's what I did. The main spar here, I put plastic blocks in there so nothing will interfere with the main spar. So that little strip won't interfere with the main spar. And the same thing back here for the rear spar. The plastic cap, so it won't interfere there either. Uh, I've cut these down to size. Now I've just got a rotor, a little groove all the way down. And so I'm going to set up my router and get that done. And I'll let you know how that goes. Alright, I've got about half of the rib caps 
uh, finished today. Got the little uh, braces put onto that template. I mounted this template. I'm not going to drill those holes in um, like we're there. Elgie Yates did that so he could put clamps on the cross pieces, but clamps won't fit in there. I've tried that and they just don't quite fit in. So I'm not going to do that. He'll go without the holes there. I got the second one mounted. I've got a couple more to go. I might do that right now before I have some supper. And yeah, it was a good day. Got some stuff done. Got these machined down to size. Put the groove in there. Not quite in the middle in that one, but close. So yeah, and got some uh, strips made for just the uh, infills, the cross members. I don't know what you call them. Um, I've got a couple that are the proper size, and then a couple that are a little wider. And now a little wider shouldn't make a heck of a lot of difference when you're doing these. So instead of 3 eighths, I've got half an inch on there, and that should be fine. The only thing it's going to do other than add strength is add a minute amount of weight to that. And I'm not too worried about that.